P-A-T-R-O-N-I-Z-I-N-G. Oh, I forgot. Today I want to talk about how you're not traumatized. You're probably just hurt. There's a disturbing trend lately where psychobabble in the zeitgeist has been distorted, twisted, and sometimes even weaponized. This has given the people the idea that they can prioritize selfish, uncommunicative behavior under the guise of self-care, misuse psychological concepts like trauma and abuse, and diagnose others who have hurt them in order to dismiss their own pain. Now, terms like gaslighting and attachment and emotional labor have like bled into the social lexicon, giving people- Every time there's a word that comes out, there's a group of people that take that word and run with it. Toxic masculinity. And they put that thing in the clip and went outside and went rah, rah, rah. They went Oprah on everybody. Yeah. You got toxic masculinity. You got toxic masculinity. Why you put on a vest on? You put your toxic masculinity on. That's not that's toxic masculinity. Tox that's toxic. It's not toxic masculinity. No, because you're trying to, cause, no, cause no, I don't know what you're saying. Because if you're going to show no, up you're chilling. You're yelling. You're yelling. That's toxic. <laughs> Nah, bro, you can't keep just showing up here looking like you just murdered something in Russia and then think, I'm going to just come out here in my Manscaped donated clothing, okay? And then we're going to be fine. Thinking, Set it out. It. Talk about and that's, and that's And that's... And that's, that's I want you to feel like your emotional See, labor him, is recognized. Him right now, right now, interrupting me? Toxic masculinity. It's not that. You're it's pushing not that. me! It's not that. It's, yeah. not that. it's not that. It's like I'm engaging in emotional labor, and I feel like you don't recognize the effort I'm putting in, so it's making me feel Yo, neglected. You're good And at as me. a result of you're, feeling neglected, good. there's a part of me that's being hurt. <laughs> this is a form of emotional abuse. You don't recognize it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not even joking. When someone's trying to connect with you, you're and you cut them off before they get a chance, you're that good. is a form that's what you do. of emotional that's, trauma but that's, but that's what you do. That's trauma bonding. That's what you do. You're trying to get close to me no. by traumatizing I'm me. just trying to make money and explain my shit. Okay. Talk about it. Because I feel like it's so hard to get you to open you're up. You're so patronizing right now. No, I feel like for me it's hard to get you to open nah, up. You know, you know, that's what you're doing right now. You're 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 so patronizing all the time. You're, you try to be like this. Why don't you man. spell patronizing? Uh P-A-T-R-O-N-I-Z-I-N-G. Oh, I didn't Oh, I didn't Oh, 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 I said, you know what you need to start doing? The next time someone says gas, you'll spell that shit. <laughs> if you can spell it, I'm going to say I did it. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Gaslight it. Go ahead, bitch. Spell it. And even if they guess right, just say they wrong and gaslight them. <laughs> Stay toxic, my friend. It's an evil world we live in. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. The core of what humans want. Mm -hmm is knowing exactly and being able to, to predict and know exactly. That's why there's people that are fans of astrology where they, I don't know, I know this. Yeah, and you I feel know, like this is I, can, I, I agree. That, that I, I remember saying that, 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 that the cycle babble is just another form of astrology. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. I know the signs. People everywhere permission to cut out the toxic people at the slightest hint of discomfort, conflict, or disagreement. People are literally slinging armchair diagnoses of narcissism, PTSD, or sociopathy around like they're an Oprah-themed popped open pinata, right? You get a diagnosis. You get a diagnosis. And though this trend has its upsides. It encourages people to get help. It gives them the tools to recognize patterns that aren't working for them. It provides language to more accurately communicate their feelings. It also has a really uh, stark downside, which is that this blunted lens has warped our view of relationships. We're not seeing them as nuanced and complex dynamics that require an ongoing dialogue, but as a one-way transaction. There has been so much rhetoric online lately that encourages disconnection over communication, or language that insists your needs be placed above all else. And this kind of black and white thinking completely ignores that we live in a messy world and sometimes our relationships will require compromise. I don't think you can go into any interpersonal dynamic expecting that your needs are gonna be met 100% of the time. That's just not realistic. And because there's so much like Instagram therapy going around, I wanna clarify my personal philosophy of what I believe our approach should be. So I think you should put your own needs above other people's wants, but put other people's needs over your wants. I think putting other people's needs over your own needs is at times necessary, and it's also a very kind, loving sacrifice to make. However, putting your needs over other people's needs 
is also sometimes necessary and a kind, loving, protective thing to do. And this dance of deciding mm, whose needs take priority, this is a case-by-case -case basis that should be balanced based on your best judgment. Look, boundaries are meant to keep people in, not out. Oh, that's pretty cool. That wasn't bad, I like that. Clear is I feel like the only positive be like, bullshit. But I'm like, I don't mind that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking about it, but go ahead. If it's not a need for you, you should consider your partner's needs. So if she needs you to shut the fuck up, but you just want to talk, then you oh, should shut yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Right? But if you need to talk and she needs you to shut the fuck up, sometimes you need to still keep talking. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Same way if you if, if someone needs to talk to you, but you don't you don't want to talk to them. Sometimes you still have to talk to them because that's your responsibility. Yeah, but sometimes they really need to. No, sometimes no. Sometimes they want to talk to you. They don't need to. Yeah, they don't need to. Right. But they, if they but need they, to they, talk to they, you, the way they, the you way, gotta the be. Way, the way they say, the way they say it is, no, I need to talk to you. Keyword is need. No, it's, it's keyword is need. But you really have to exert. No, you really want. But some, and there's a difference between really want and that's need. That's facts. That's facts. That's why I say some people mm -hmm. don't know the difference between they want yeah, and they need. Yeah, they don't. Some girl wants a man that will walk with her on the beach every week. But she don't need that. But no. she might say she does. Yeah. I need a man who's hyper romantic. No. You don't need it. No, you don't need it. You want you it. You want it. It's different. And you really, really want it doesn't mean you really need it. Yeah, okay. All right. Speak on that. Mm. Mm. So communicate your feelings instead of avoiding conflict. And being triggered, look, that's actually a gift to see what you need to work on. Not to, not a way to censor other people. Like, yes, we should all be very considerate, but if you're seeing triggers more in terms of- Pause, pause, pause. I like, I like, yo, at some point, those words when they, when they get used a lot, at some point it becomes a, an insult, just like triggered. I remember at some point, people was like, was saying to me, yo, okay, you're triggered. And I was like, yes. No, yeah, yeah, that fucking triggers me. Eating with your mouth open triggers the fuck out of me, okay? Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'm triggered. <laughs> you be triggered. I'm triggered. You be triggered. Ah, yeah. Absolutely, 100%. Absolutely. There's some shit that triggers you as well. No. I'm composed. I don't know what you're talking about. Just because I'm sweating don't mean I'm nervous. Just means I'm hot. Whatever. Preach. Chinchilla. Let's keep playing. It's, it's, Mr. it's Mr. Chinchilla to you. Okay. Miss Preach? Yes. Miss Preach? And Miss Abba. Okay. <laughs> if you're seeing triggers more in terms of like censoring others rather than an opportunity for self-exploration, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. All of these tools are meant to help us navigate relationship dynamics. They're meant to help us repair inevitable ruptures. They're meant to protect our ability to remain engaged. But if you're using therapy speak as an excuse to ice people out, diagnose someone post-mortem your relationship, or set rules for another person's behavior, you are misusing them in an attempt to justify your own victim mentality, insecurity, or ego. Like okay, you're right. I don't want to play the whole thing because I think that's a good point to stop it at. But um, some short-term thoughts, what I would say is this. I understand the need to self-diagnose. Not everyone can afford therapy or go to figure things out on a professional level. Mm -hmm. So trying to make sense of the pain that you feel that's very real is difficult. Yep. And who is anyone on the outside to tell someone who's hurt that they're not traumatized? Very difficult. You don't know their experience. You don't know what's going on internally. For example, two people can get in a car accident. One person's traumatized, the other one's not. Someone can look at the situation and say, neither of you traumatized. Someone else can look at it and both of you are traumatized. But the truth is, only the person who's going through it who can explain their symptoms to a professional actually will be able to engage with the fact that they're traumatized. So diagnosing others to me oftentimes is very unproductive. Uh, I think it, if you're going to do it, do it so very, it's like salt. Add it to the dish. Don't drown the bitch. People are drowning. They drown in insult. All of a sudden, they look a little thirsty, but they cause their own suffering. Yeah. All I'm trying to say is, in an effort to make sense of the world, you actually shroud it in more darkness. Because by diagnosing something with PTSD, you lose the nuance of the situation, so you don't actually come to an understanding of why that behavior was actually there. Instead, you project it onto some trauma that happened in the past, and you're saying, this is why that happened. Or maybe there's a result of your own behavior. Maybe it's a result of something else that happened to that person. Maybe it's a result of work stress. But when you 
make everything about this diagnosis, you leave, it, there's no room for that nuance to come into play. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? Sometimes your partner wasn't a narcissist. They were just an asshole to you. And the next person they get with, they're extremely kind with them. But maybe, that happens. Maybe you trigger some shit. Maybe you bring out a part of him that reminds him of his mom or his sister or his first crush and he has unresolved feelings. Or sometimes it was just you. Or, or sometimes you the shitty person and you bring out the bad things out of people. A lot of people I mean, like I gotta that. say this. I know some girls who want to convince me that all their exes were narcissists. Then I'm like, bitch, what are you? The narcissist catcher? Or like the, a dream catcher, but for narcissists? Is that you? Or the common Are you the one who's just like... Like, like like a rat trap, but for narcissists? Mm. Everybody just falling into your shit and you suffering from that? And what, what, what are you doing to constantly attract narcissists? Was, if I'm to believe the diagnosis, or the more likely thing, was since, a, not, since narcissists are so rare, is that maybe... That's what I was about to say. Just maybe. You have a bad pattern with who you're dating, but maybe they're not all narcissists. Maybe there's just certain patterns of behavior that are bad in a partner. What, narcissists <laughs> are like 5% of the population? I mean, even All less. the 5% of this population fall in your lap? I think it's even less than that. I think it's even less. I'm just being... 5% is an it's, insanely it's, it's, high yeah, number. Yeah, but I think it's even less than that. Let me look this shit up. Let it's even look. less than that. And people what throw percentage? that shit around like everybody's a narcissist. Well, I mean, my understanding of narcissism is that... And we all have a certain level of narcissism. It's just some people who end up really, really high on the spectrum are actually like diagnosed. Between 0.5 and 1%. That's not that high. No, it's very, very. You, 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 hey, bitch! Everybody can get not, a lottery not, ticket. Not, You're point five percent landing on it every time. Come not on, everybody man. can be a narcissist in their life. No, no. So sometimes it got to be you. And here's the crazy part too. What? This is something that people don't know. Not all narcissists are bad people. Not all narcissists are asshole partners. There's plenty of narcissists who get married, have kids, and mitigate a lot of their narcissistic tendencies to be able to have a functioning reality. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that narcissism just relates to the fact of the way your brain's wired and the way you relate to emotions or empathy in that regards, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're inherently going to act out those behaviors all the time or you can't mitigate them. Oh, like the sociopath or the, the psychopath. There's some fucked up, but even people who diddle kids or people who have that attraction. Yeah. Not most people who have that attraction don't actually do it. No. That's the kind of fucked up thing to even think about. So all this to say, I understand why people do it, but you have to recognize Short and quick answers rarely exist. Oftentimes, the problems or the things that we want to solve are complex. They take time. They take reflection. They take life experience. People just want to slap a label because just like Priest said earlier, it just makes them feel comfortable and makes them understand the world. What do you want to say? Nothing. I want to feel like I understand the world. I know what's going on. See, this is the part that frustrates me about our dynamic because I do all this emotional labor and then I pass it on to you. It's like you don't even recognize it. And I think it's okay. And this is why I feel neglected in this dynamic. It's fine. And that would be emotional abuse. <laughs> a partner who doesn't acknowledge your pain, your suffering, yeah, your yeah, labor. Yeah, that, that's your pain? That, that's your pain? You don't see it because you think I'm sweating, but these are tears. I just, I just, I cry from feet. <laughs> that's death lights. <laughs> you, you cry from your forehead, nigga? I, I, I Yo, that shit was fun. And this motherfucker crying like this? Nah, B. When they say Ethiopian men are sensitive, this is what they talk about. But anyways, nobody, nobody said that ever. ever. That's true. That's true. Nobody said that. Nobody said that. But I can't tell they are very sensitive. Um, moving on from that point. Um, <laughs> me personally, when I meet a girl, she starts throwing out, oh, he's a narcissist or gaslight or this and that. I start rolling my R's. Those are I's, not R's. But I do roll my R's, you know what I mean? No, you don't. Really? <laughs> when I see a girl and she throws away all those affirmations, okay, okay, I'm, I'm fucking up. I think when she's saying the person is narcissistic and gaslighting, I think I'm rolling my R's. I, I, I fucked it up. I'm just saying, it's crazy. Don't do it, okay? Roll your R's, <laughs> not your eyes. You know what I mean. You try to go, you really try to go with it. <laughs> When life gives you lemons, roll your arse. So, that's all I got. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about narcissism gaslighting? Nah. I didn't actually sneeze. <laughs> oh my God. All right, I'm done. <laughs>